Hallelujah. We are so blessed to have this servants of the Lord. Bishop, this is who we are. I don't have to introduce anything to you. This is who we are. We are a vibrant. I mean, we're all excited for God because He's done a lot of good things for us. A lot. Amen. So today we are honored. Amen. We are blessed. These are servants of the Lord that. Uh, God has connected uh, my wife and I to. Uh, let me start with Pastor Richard at the back there, Pastor Richard Wayne. Uh, I will be deceived by his quietness. He is an anointed man of God. He loves God so much. Amen. And uh, by God's grace, uh, through uh, Pastor Young, uh, we went to their prayer. Some of you know we do have a prayer meeting uh, every Tuesday, so we get to know him. And uh, today he's with us. This one can work for him. Hallelujah. Yeah. On the journey, uh, uh, you know, the, 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 the ministry journey, God brings different people in your lives. And uh, you descend the spirit, you see God in their life, and you see grace. You also understand that there's a living God in the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So, on the conference we had last year, was it last year? Uh, yeah, yeah, last year, yeah, at DGL. Uh, Pastor Richard said, I want you to meet somebody, someone you connect with. Uh, he's coming from the US. At that time, he was coming from the U.S. He's got two bases, one lady in there and one lady in the U.S. Amen. So I was honored to meet uh, Bishop Dennis at that time. My wife was not there, but I met the wife a bit later. Amen. And uh, we just clicked. We just realized this is divine connection. Amen. Hallelujah. So today, by God's grace, I want to know that uh, the pioneering anointing is in the house. When God blesses us with men of God, there is a forward momentum that will take place in our lives. There's something that God has not done before that's going to happen in our lives. Glory be to Jesus. So we are so privileged and uh, he found me that he was on his way this way. I said, you're welcome and uh, I asked him if he could take the service. And he, he was glad to be able to say, I will be ready. Amen. Amen. Just a short uh, uh, profile of our bishop. Uh, uh, Dennis, uh, I'm used to calling you, if it is fine with you, God bless you, sir. And uh, Bishop Dennis John and uh, Pastor Dennis John, amen. Uh, these are born servants of the Lord that have been together for 35 years. Amen. <laughs> um, and, uh, married for 33 years, amen. And uh, they have three children. Right by birth, uh, Simon, uh, Camille, uh, JDL, and also by marriage, uh, Jacob and Brown, and then those are three grand daughters, Kimberly, Laura, Myra, and one grandson to be born in January. Amen. Smile. <laughs> Oh, Mira. All right, Mira. All right. I thought it was in, uh, an African name. <laughs> if you go to uh, East End, it's Mira. <laughs> Hallelujah. They also have two adopted uh, sons, Sifiso, married to Norma, with two children, uh, Kanyezi and Nothine. Hallelujah. Amen. And then they have Joshua and uh, Spepero. Spe 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 Amen. Hallelujah. So these are founders, as I say to you, the pioneers of the working movement. They are founders and senior pastors of a ministry called uh, Good News Center. Amen. Amen. Good News Center Global. Praise the name of Jesus. So if you happen to uh, visit the heaven, don't say I don't know where to go to. You know, I just uh, saw a church in the corner and I that. Amen. Go to a place where I am connected to. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. What is the name of the church? What is the name of the church? 
you are used to Christian life center. This one is good news center. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So if you happen to be in heaven, amen. Some of you love to be in heaven. And I know you do and spend the weekend there once in a while. So go to their ministry. If you're not sure, you consult us so that we can give you the details and we can direct you to where the ministry is. Amen. Bishop uh, John uh, is also the executive bishop and adjunct to the prelate of jurisdictions 12 uh, of Africa of the Convention of Covenant Churches. Uh, the Convention of Covenant Churches are uh, also called three CCs, CCC. All right. I was introduced to, and uh, I'm known on that platform. Amen. Uh, it's a, it's a, an alliance that uh, brings men of God together, churches together, all right, with a drive to focus on uh, evangelism, to focus on the mandate of our Lord Jesus Christ, to focus on unity as the body of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. So you remember last year, I nearly left you, I nearly went to the U.S. to start a branch. <laughs> no, nah, it was not. <laughs> It was towards this conference, but it was this we trust God that we will be there next season. Amen. Amen. So, with Jesus joy today, uh, looking at time, I never know if you can ask your wife to say something. She will go first and bring the people. All right. Come bring the people. Bless you. Amen.
because they target their energy sites, so they don't have lights, they don't have water, and, and doctors working under such conditions. And I want to take, you know, the Lord looks at you this morning, and He loves grateful people. Amen. He doesn't like, He doesn't like murmuring. You know, no matter what you're going through this morning, I saw you praise the Lord. Amen. Because the Bible tells us that we must not love our life even unto death. Because, not, because death is not a defeat for us. It is a victory. Hallelujah. But your father is praying over you this morning. There will be no premature death. Hallelujah. You will finish well. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, you will finish well. And what is well? Well is fulfilling the promises of what God ordained for your life to do. Amen. The scripture is simple. Seek ye first. Everybody look at your neighbor first. What is first? Amen. And so when you're, putting, when you're having a, a pity party about your first, it contradicts the word of God. Because he says, seek ye first. Because we go with our first first, not his first. When you put his first, it's a guarantee that you are going to get what you desire. Yeah. It's a guarantee. Why do we have to cry? Why do we have to murmur? Why do we have to complain? Why do we have to say, oh, why me? Look at them. They got it. She got it. He got it. But you're not doing the seeking first. The seeky first is, it's very difficult. The seeky first is join the army of God. And that means a very disciplined life. It means a very righteous life. And he will grant you the desires of your heart. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness. And then he will grant you. All that you want. Is that okay today? Yeah. Hallelujah. I'm going to sing a little chorus and I give it to my husband, all right? Yeah. And then this is for all the moms and even men today that are crying in the midnight hour. The Bible says, Those that call upon the name of our Lord shall be saved. Amen. Say the name of Jesus. Say the name.
Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for touching us. Thank you for your presence that is in this place. Thank you for your presence that, Lord, turns situations around. We thank you. The name is so sweet. The name of Jesus. There is no other name that we know. We love you, Jesus. We love you. We love you. You are all that we ever needed. You are all that we ever need. We love you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Come on, somebody, thank him this morning. He's been so good to us. He is so good. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Don't give up. Don't give up. I hear the Lord saying, some have waited. You're waiting all year and saying, Lord, when is my breakthrough? And I hear the Lord saying, don't give up. It may seem like 10 months have passed, 11 months have passed, and we're entering the 12th. But the Lord says, I will accept it. Don't give up. Stand in faith. Remain faithful because I am faithful. Hallelujah. Some will see the miracles because you didn't give up, because you didn't surrender, because you chose not to give up. You will see your miracle and it will carry you just for next year, but it will carry you for the years ahead. Some businesses that suffered because of all that's happened in the last two and a half years. God will cause increase and set you up for the new year and the years ahead. What, your, what business ideas stay, He will give you new because He says, I do a new thing. Forget the former things. Forget and know that I Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. We see it. We receive it. We see it. We see it in the name of Jesus. We see it. We receive it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Is somebody's name Francis that's here? And if you're watching and your name is Francis, the healing touch from heaven is yours. I see a situation with your heart. God's healing it. No longer will those vows be crossed, but supernaturally a release in Jesus. Amen. Come on, give Jesus some praise this morning glory that is due to his name hallelujah hallelujah amen god bless you i greet every one of you in the name of jesus those who are watching on social media i greet you in the name of jesus it is a privilege and a blessing to be here i'm so honored to be with dr Muno and pastor tina first lady and your leadership and you you know i just wanted to be here you, even if i didn't get to preach or whatever we just to be here that was we've been trying to do this for a while now pastor richard yes. hallelujah so thank you i honor you and i honor 
the, the Christian Life Center Global Ministries because Jesus is the center. Amen. 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 God bless you. You may be seated. Thank you, Lord. Do I use this? Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. I'll keep this right here. Use the mic, bro. Okay. It's a, you know, the Lord knows how He connects people. My, my very close brother and friend, Dr. Richard, who were in school together, him and his wife, and I think if Nalene was here, she would be exhilarated. And our heart has always been to connect and to come together, to bring the body of Christ together. Uh, Dr. Rich has always been about prayer. Ever since we, you know, he came, in, he came from a Hindu background. But when he got saved, I mean, you talk about being saved. He never turned back. Increase in prayer, mighty intercessor. And we're always, we stay in touch. No matter where we are in the world, they would be in touch and connect. And, and even he said, you've got to meet, I want you to meet Dr. Moon. I don't know who he was, where he's from. I mean, I knew from Gauteng. And then when it came, and the Lord just quickened our hearts that we can come together like this. Yes, we are the pastors and founders of Good News Center Global. And, you know, it's all about Jesus. That, that's all we know. It's all about Jesus. I serve as a bishop with the Convention of Covenanting Churches, Jurisdiction 12 my prelate bishop john edwards uh the third he you know when we first when they first called me to serve i didn't know what to do i said i don't know what to do what do we do he said no we're going to pray so we prayed from 2014 praying for africa praying for the pastors praying for leaders god send us leaders that we can work with send us people that have your heart that will have a kindred spirit for the kingdom of god and you know, in the last five years, we 2014, that's when we started. In the last five years, God has so quickened that and brought these strategic men because we're preparing for an end time harvest of souls. And there has to be right men and women in place. And God is just bringing that connection so that we can serve together. Amen. Amen. So I'm grateful that we could be here today with you and I'm grateful for this time to share with you. I want to share with you what God has been putting on my heart, preparing for the new year. And I know many of you maybe already got your, your, your year planners if you're in business, you've got year planners if you're working for a corporate uh, company, you, you already got things that's planned for the new year. I, w I, want, I want you to understand something. That in as much as all of that planning is taking place, you know, in the business world, they strategize five years in advance. And, 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 and sometimes we get stuck in the strategy of the world's idea of the five years and we forget about the now. But see, God has a plan. He doesn't have a five-year plan. He doesn't have a ten-year plan. God has a plan for eternity. Amen. Everything has been prepared. Everything has been set. And all we have to do is fit into it. And so we're praying, preparing for the new year, preparing, Lord, what do you want to say? What are you saying to us in the new year? And, and I know I'm not going to be able to get through all of this uh, today. But there were four areas that the Lord was impressing in my heart to cover in the new year. And, and I was this title together and I call it a vision demanding strategy vision demands strategy do you believe that right now there's a lot that's happening in the world but there's a lot that's happening in the church the, the teaching of false doctrine has come at an increase and people are bold if you go back to the early church fathers, if you go back to, you know, even when you're reading the book of Acts, when people were out of error, they dealt with it. They dealt with them. 
You read the letters written by John, by Peter, by uh, Paul, and he and they address those who are out of line, those who are bringing another gospel, those who are bringing another Christ, those who are bringing another spirit. They addressed it. And and if you read after that, those who are considered heretics, if they just veered just a little bit off the truth, they brought into alignment very quickly. Some were actually put were in exile. They exiled them to the desert. That's where Muhammad got his teachings from. All messed up. Now you have to understand. In this day, they're so bold. And you know what has happened? The church, the leadership in the church globally have, it's like they've lost that authority to call to mark one who is walking out of order. When you think about false prophesying, you've got two types. You've got a false prophet and you've got a prophet, a prophet who is prophesying falsely. One who is called to be a prophet, but he's prophesying. It's like how Isaiah said, I dwell amongst a men, men with unclean, I have unclean lips, and I dwell amongst a people of unclean lips. Only when the king died did he realize, what was I prophesying? So you have all of this happening in this age. What are we to do? And so I was looking at these things and just, just a few things the Lord put in my heart to share about how to strategize. One was the area of worship. These are all basic fundamental truths in the body of Christ. But these are some of the areas where it has gone off in another direction. Worship. Warfare that is needed our witness as a believer and your wealth as a believer those four areas the Lord said speak about these things prepare for these things in first Chronicles 12 verse 32 the word speaks about the sons of Issachar who understood the times of the day more than just understanding the time that they lived in, they understood or they knew what needed to be done. When you see all that's happening around us, there is a crunch, there's a pressure, there's a push on the church to bend towards what the world wants. Politically, you see that then veering towards the pleasing of the masses and the turning away from the word of God. Governments that follow the principles of the word of God are turning away from the word of God because they're following the, the will of man. The pleasures of man. They're more interested in how we can please man's culture. Man's desires, and you see the compromise, and of course, naturally, the minute you compromise what God's word says, there is going to be a collapse, and you see you, what we talked about superpowers collapsing. But there is one that will not collapse, and that is the church, the kingdom of God. Because the Bible says, Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. You and I, all we have to do is proclaim that he is the Christ, that he is the son of God. That's all that is needed. And he said, I will build my church. I give you, I give you the church, the keys of the kingdom. You can bind whatever you want on the earth. And it will be bound in heaven. You lose whatever you want on earth and it will be loose in heaven. So we have to understand the times that we're living in and what we need to do. So you know, with regards to the area of worship, I want you to think about what has happened even within the church. Worship has been equated to just some performance. It's a concert. Where the worship, lead, the focus has been on the worship leader. COVID taught us that worship no longer belongs just to the leader. 
because the leader had to stand with nobody in front of him he had to stand before a camera and worship the Lord and not looking at what the reactions of the people are going to be for him, whether he's dressed well enough or whatever it is. But this is what we have done. And there is absolutely nothing wrong with dressing well, with being well, with having the best. But we have changed it like the world and made it into some kind of a concert. And so we assume that worship only means a Sunday morning coming together and gathering like this where we sing some songs and we sing or we put it up or whatever we do we do some performance or dance or whatever and then worship is over come monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday saturday we we, we don't have we have a different lifestyle but you know the bible when the lord gave the commandment about worshiping him he didn't mean on sunday morning for just two hours It has to change. We, we need all of the, the beauty and the, the excellence. We need that. The Bible speaks about skillfully playing. God made instruments for us to worship with. But what we have done is we brought in the ideas of the world and we've made the ideas of the world the marketing tool to increase our fellowship. Jesus is not the center. So everything we do, we've created an atmosphere, but there is no presence of God. But Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. One congregation decided to use the, the, the marketing strategies of the world. In, they employed a secular consultant, a secular marketing consultant on how they can grow their church. And the failure that comes with it, the disaster that comes with it, because unless the Lord builds... They that labor, they labor in vain. So our worship, our worship needs to change. In Exodus 20 from verse 1 to 6, have we not learned where the Lord said, It is I. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and Him only shalt thou serve. You will have no other gods before me. You will not make any idols. You will not bow down to them. Neither will you worship them. <coughs> I'm a jealous God. I'm the only one. This is one thing you have to understand. That means Jesus has to be the center of everything that we do. In Matthew chapter 22 and verse 37, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. But, you know, in the church we have idols. I just touched on the one issue of the atmosphere and the worship leader and maybe the choir and the musicians and, and all of the other paraphernalia that goes with it. The lighting, the smoke, what do you call it? Smoke machines. Do you know one congregation was actually using a certain type of a gas in the air, con the air conditioning system they use it in nightclubs that will keep you coming back over and over. So that you have a euphoric feeling. And they're supposedly, they're big in terms of the, when you talk about mega church, they have thousands of people all around the country. But see, that's not who we're supposed to be as the Lord. As the Lord's. There are idols. Jesus said to Satan in Matthew chapter 4, verse 10. Satan tried to tempt Jesus to follow his plan. Jesus came to take the world back and give man back his authority. Satan said to Jesus, I will give it to you. Because he had it. Man gave it to Satan. Satan said to Jesus, I will give it to you. You don't have to go the way of the cross. 
Just bow down and worship me. And Jesus at that point annoyed because Satan came and tempted him just two times before. And he said, the Bible says, and he rebuked Satan and asked him to leave. And he said, thou shall worship the Lord thy God and him only shall thou serve. Nobody and nothing must come before the living God. Jesus has to be the center of everything. So the idols, yes, practically some idols. Identity, who I am. And, and, and you know, we live in a country, we live in a world where we divide our congregations by race. Whether we're Indian or black, or white, colored, Chinese, it, European, it's, it's like these, we have all these divisions. They talk about the African diaspora of the church. I understand that. They talk about the Indian diaspora. And then all the Indians gather together in one corner. All the Africans in another corner. But can I ask, who do we belong to? We're citizens of the kingdom of heaven. Where there is neither culture nor creed. Because when I go to heaven, I can't pull my South African passport and say, Here, this is what's going to get me into heaven. It's not going to be because I'm an American or because I'm a British citizen or a European citizen. But it's going to be because I'm a child of God. That's what gains and gives me. Jesus said, My church, I will build it. I give you the keys. I give you the means for entrance. Paul said it. It's neither Greek nor Jew. Male or female. He put it, he laid it straight. We are supposed to come as one. So identity is out of the picture. As far as race. Then the other issue of identity is what? The confusion. As who's male and who's female. When people can't define what a, a female is. There's a problem. If a problem is with a car, they go back to who? The manufacturer. So if I have a problem with my identity, I should go to my master. I should go to the creator. And guess what? The creator is not confused. Money and material things. We worship money and material things. Sometimes we come to church only because we want God to meet our needs financially. And yes, He will. But as soon as He meets our needs, then we take the same money that the Lord gave us and we're outside. And they don't, we, don't see, we don't see the money or you or that person, not you. That person, you are here. That person until the money runs out. Until you need a new job, new house, new car. Jobs, status in jobs, entertainment, physical appearance, sex and romantic love. Come to that in a moment. Comfort, phones and technology, family and children, influence and fame. So they did a survey. And this survey, they asked these questions like this here. Which is most important? What would you rate as number one as far as a priority in your life? This survey was not done with unbelievers. It was done among church-going people. Over 25,000 church-going people that they interviewed. I know 25,000 is a small number compared to over 3 billion or so that are believers. But here goes. In this survey... 70%, almost 70% said they're more interested. The number one priority is their comfort. Because if there's no air conditioning in the church, I am not going there. If there isn't a comfortable seat, I am not going there. If it's too far for me to walk, I am idle. Now, you know, you understand that it's more than just our... Time of look at the celebration that we have when we come into the house of the Lord because our life is that way because we choose to be here. Because if you're forced and the aircon is so hot in here, 
Why doesn't Dr. Muna get some air conditioning? We're more, I, I understand. When we can do the comfort thing, we'll do the comfort thing. Amen. I know this is not your end goal. You want a better place. You want, but there are priorities. But people have made that. They would choose to go to a church simply because of comfort. The second thing had to do with control and security. 50%. 56%. Said it was security and control. In other words, we want to make sure that we are safe and we are in control of everything that's going on. It's an idol. 55% said their priority is money. 55% said their priority is money. 55% said the approval. Oh, sorry. When I say 55, in terms of priority, the priority in life, 51% of their priority is money. 55% is money. Approval is 51. Success is 49%. Social influence is 46%. Social influence in terms of who likes me on Facebook and who doesn't. Political power. 32, in other words, in terms of their priorities, they, gave, they said 32% of their time is as far as sex and romance is concerned. And you know, sex and romance is beautiful in the confines of marriage and God made it holy and blessed, but it's not number one. And your, your, your pastors are very good marriage counselors. They'll tell you, in your marriage, you only need 5% of it. But if you don't have the 5%, 95% of the marriage is destroyed. But we made that the priority but you see, when you make Jesus, when Jesus is number one, this is that worship that I'm talking about, this pure worship, this uncontaminated worship, that nothing else, because now it's the part about loving the Lord my God with all my heart, with all my soul, and with all my mind, with all my strength. This is worship Him, putting Him first, and everything else is love. They, they didn't say that they came to church because of Jesus. Jesus wasn't the number one thing. These were the priorities in terms of that list. It has to change. If we're going to strategize and have a vision for the new year, what God wants to do in and through us, our worship has got to change. So where you, what the choices you make is your choice of worship. It's not just so much the words that come out of your mouth when you sing or the actions when you dance or clap or whatever. It's a combination of all things put together. Because for the nation of Israel, it was more than just a celebrating of feast but it was their lifestyle for every single day god gave them instruction not for a worship service he gave them instruction for life he gave them instruction for how it's supposed to be every day so therefore in every area of their life whether it was marriage whether it was children whether it was business whether it was their clothing everything was centered towards him to worship him so our worship lifestyle must change. Amen? It must change. I think I said enough as far as worship is concerned. The next area is warfare. If you haven't paid attention, but the enemy is no longer coming in a, what they call it, you use a big word, clandestine style, no longer coming like a ninja. Our terms. No, more, no longer coming stealth mode. You know, the, the enemy no longer creeping in. He's coming in boldly. And trying to, you know, put, put himself right in your face. And almost like testing you. To see what you would do. Whether you would give in. Whether you would stop speaking. Whether you would choose to quiver and go under. And the Bible says in Thessalonians that he will be seen. The enemy will be seen. That the devil is making himself known. You, you, you look at the music and the, and the movies, they're very open. In the 80s, we used to do backward masking. You know, you take a song and you must go play it backwards to get the message. These days, you don't need to play backwards. Straight, it's direct. 
right in your face. Right in your face. You just, you just, you, you feel embarrassed. But the enemy knows his time is at hand. The enemy knows that Jesus is coming. And the enemy is going to put up a fight like he has never done before. He's going to find every way, every means possible to come against us in the laws of our country. <coughs> Excuse me, just think in COVID time what happened. How the enemy changed. We as a church close together. We, we are essential services. Amen. We're more important than really. And if you're a doctor, I honor you. We're more important than the doctors that give medical attention to the physical body. We are the ones who deal with the spiritual issues, the, the problems of life. And you, you see the warfare that is taking place and how the enemy through the laws are trying to change that. You think of how the word of God is being changed. You, you think of how it is affecting our schools. Around the world, the laws that they change they're changing the toilet. They want to add a third toilet. For who? You, and we're just keeping quiet because we're just praising the Lord. Hallelujah. And the enemy is doing what he wants to do. Because we're comfortable in our zone. Comfort. We're comfortable in our zone. There will come a time where they will stop us even from preaching. Okay, COVID finish. We won. Because we came out. And we prayed and we worshipped. And we went, to, we went to the social media. In fact, what the enemy thought he could use for, for his good, the Lord used it for his good. We went and reached more people through social media. Amen. Now we're reaching that, that mom or that dad that couldn't walk. We're reaching. So thank God for that. Think about load shedding for South Africa. How come it's just around church time? Please explain that one to me. The prime time for church, 8 to 12, that's the prime time they catch. If anything, I'm saying that this is the enemy. The Bible says we are not ignorant of the devil and his devices. We have got to rise up. We must be willing to die. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 12 verse 11, babe. And they loved not their lives to the... They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of the testimony, and they loved not their lives to the death. That meaning, meaning they had to, you had to fight. In Ephesians 6 it says resist. Resisting, or in James, resisting does not mean I'm just going to stand back and watch what, whatever is happening. Resisting means you find strategies. <coughs> if you have to go underground, if you have to go in stealth mode, if you have to find yourself in parliament, if you have to find yourself in that company, and you standing up for who you are in that company, under the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit, and if you who are the Bible says being strengthened, being empowered by the power of the Holy Spirit. And, and, and as you go, you're going with the armor of God. You're able to fight with the enemy. See, this is what the Lord told me about warfare. We need an army that will be in order. In subordination with authority. The church is the army of God. Amen? amen? I'll give you a scripture for it just now, then you'll say amen louder. The church is the army of God. See, we cannot afford to have rebellious and independent soldiers. That's not a soldier. That's not an army. That's a vigilante. Vigilantes only think about themselves. Vigilantes only think about their community. We're going to protect. These rioters are not going to come and, and loot our stuff. We're going to protect it. That's a vigilante. Or you have another kind, mercenaries. They're skilled. 
they're trained, they can fight, they have the equipment, but they do it for money. They do it as a job, as a career, they get paid for it. We can't have that in the body of Christ. The body of Christ needs the soldiers. That's why Paul I mean, wrote to Timothy and he said, as a good soldier, endure hardships because he knows that. Paul wrote in Ephesians 6, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and rulers of the darkness of this age. Spiritual laws of wickedness in high places. We're engaged in war. We didn't come to a comfort zone. We didn't come to a party. We didn't come to a soccer game. We came to fight. We are called to fight. We are called into warfare. We have to wait every kind of war that you can imagine within the body through the power of Jesus and knowing this that we already have won we have the victory in Ezekiel 36 37 in 36 it talks about new heart a new spirit in 37 he says speak to those bones see those bones they're dry they're dead speak to the bones and the, the prophet of the Lord had to speak to the bones the Lord asked can they live you know, right now, there are many dead bones in the church. There are many dead bones in the church. There's no life in them. The Spirit of God is not in them. The power of God is not in them. But the Bible says the, the prophet spoke. And then he said, and I saw an exceedingly great army rise up. He saw an army. They were dead bones. But he saw an army. Right now, there may be dead bones. For what I see in the body of Christ, there are dead bones. They are just there. The soldiers need to rise up. And as we speak life, as we prophesy to the bones, there will be a rattling and a shaking as we as the body of Christ, like you heard your pastor speak, there will be no murders. There will be no robberies. You will be protected. You are you're protected for a reason. For the purpose. Because you have to fight. You have to engage in warfare. Because we know there are souls of men and women that are perishing. I was in a meeting just a few months ago. And, and, and Dr. Richard knows this. He's services they set up the South African police service set up a unit called spiritual crime prevention have you ever heard of a thing it's called spiritual crime prevention yes all religions are supposed to be part of it now I serve on the the, 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 the executive committee for KZN the the commissioner came the minister of police Becky Kelly came they were talking to us and they said the problems that we have we can't handle because it's not we can put they said we can put all the criminals in the prison 50% of our population will be in prison the problem is spiritual we need your help please come and pray in the police station pray in the schools because in our schools in KZN, in the school that we work in, grade 5, selling drugs, taking drugs, violent towards the teacher, principal, they don't care. Grade 5, the one school the police went and raided and took their drugs and their, and their cell phones and, and all of that away. They got angry and burnt the school down. Quarangese in KZN. So they said, please. Now in KZN and in our forum, Majority are believers. Yes, we, we invite everybody and we let them know. Go, you do what you want to do, but we're going to pray. In the schools in KZN, people possess, children possess with demonic spirits. The teacher can't handle it. The doctors can't handle it. And by the way, they call the witch doctors. They call all the others. Come, do. They can't do it. Only the power in the name of Jesus. Now you and I have that power. Our has got to increase we have to understand that we are soldiers we can't sit back 
We cannot just wait for things to happen. Now, in our prayer, warfare. In our praise, warfare. In our living, warfare. If we walk every day, we walk as a soldier. It is no longer I that live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life which I live in the flesh, I live by faith through the Son of God who loves me and gave himself for me. So my identity is taken away. If you take the ID of a soldier, you see it clearly states, my, our, our niece, my wife, Pastor Eunice's niece, served in the U.S. Army in the war in Iraq. And she showed us her card. You don't have an identity. You have a serial number. You are property of the U.S. Army. You are an asset to the U.S. Army. One of our young men who is in the Navy, he's in Musenberg, he's in Simonstown right now. He showed me his, the South African Defense Force, the card. It says the same thing. He came and shared one day with us and he talked to us. And he said, when you engage, when you enlist, when you are in the army, you don't belong to yourself, you belong to the army. You must submit to the authority. This is what we need, submission. And the generals are giving the instructions. But what has happened in the, ch in the church, because the army is not functioning and vigilantes and mercenaries, each one is doing their own thing. And the devil is having a laugh. Because he knows I can take out that mercenary, I can take out that vigilante. But when we, we rise up as one army, as the body of Christ, uh, that's, that's, why, that's why Dr. Munna, we're coming together. The streams are coming together. That's why we're coming together as the body of Christ. Christian Life Center, Good News Center, Open Heaven Sanctuary. What, what's, what's Dr. Young's, Pastor Young's? Fountain of Life. Coming together. The body of Christ, because we're coming together as soldiers. Right now, training because we're engaging for the greatest warfare that is ever to take place because now we're going to see the turning the battle is almost over because Jesus is coming the captain of the host is about to come the lion of the tribe of Judah is about to roar the roar of victory over us you and I need to stand we can't afford to play these games anymore hallelujah I close with these two and I'll say our witness Jesus said to the disciples after the Holy Ghost has come upon you you will be a witness after the Holy Ghost comes upon you you will be a witness do you know what a witness is see we've forgotten we got witness programs we're going witnessing we got a track and we're going witnessing some of us are bold we get the door slammed on our face maybe even get a punch or two but you know what a witness means? The Greek word is used, martyrdom. That means you must be willing to die. And they love not their lives to the death. That's witnessing. We're not talking about these little games we play. We've got an evangelistic outreach. We will do our evangelism. We will go on mission trips. But I'm talking about where your life is given up completely. Fourthly, finally with regards to wealth the whole world is chasing after wealth the whole, the whole world everything is about wealth you know all this green energy that they're talking about the fight for solar power we need solar power electric cars but it's all about money the truth be told it's not about saving a person it's about money but the lord said in deuteronomy 8 and verse 22 he said to the he said to his people the reminder i give you the power i am the lord i give you the power i am the lord i give you the power to acquire wealth so all you need to the only work that you need to do is in John 6 verse 26 the only work that you have to do is believe in Jesus amen, amen. now I'll close I said I'm closing I close this one James chapter 5 and verse I know from verse 1 because some of us are living where you're working so hard 
You're working, not getting paid. You work, maybe you're working, maybe you're, you're from a... Maybe you're from one of the other countries apart from South Africa and you're working here and you're not getting the weight that you're supposed to get. Maybe you are South African and you don't get the minimum weight that you're supposed to get. Maybe you're doing the job of a manager but you're getting paid as a laborer. And in your heart it's like, how can this be? The unfairness. You heard my wife speak about the injustice that occurs. And you're crying out to God. What about me, Lord? What about me? In James chapter 5, from verse 1 onwards, it talks about the wages of the laborer is crying out and the Lord, Jehovah Saboa, has heard the cry of the laborer and the cry of the wage. The wages is crying. <coughs> Excuse me. The wages is crying and the laborer is crying. Verse 4. Indeed, the wages of the laborers who mowed your fields, which kept which you kept by, fr by fraud, cry out and the cries of the reapers have reached the ears of the Lord Saboa. God has heard it. But you know what? He is promised and He has promised an end time transfer of wealth. Amen. So remain faithful. Amen. Remain integral. Remain true before the Lord. Let me finish with this. Verse 7, it says, Therefore be patient, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. Hallelujah. Be patient when? Is the Lord coming? How soon is it? We're not living in the last days anymore. We're living in the last hours. If not last minutes. Because every one year is as a thousand years and a thousand years is as one year. We're living in the last minutes. Now, he says, Wait! See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth. Wait patiently for, uh, for it until it receives the early and latter, latter rain. Verse 8. You also be patient. Establish your heart at the coming of the Lord. Because when the, in the returning of the Lord, the, just like the farmer who sowed, he waits patiently. All the labor that you've put in, all the sowing that you've done, there is an end time harvest of that wealth. Be patient and get your heart right. Amen. Can we stand together? We're going to pray. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I want to pray for you. That your heart will be quickened. Because vision needs strategy. Your worship. Your warfare. Your witness. And your wealth. You need to put strategy to that. Strategy is what am I going to do? What is my part? What part do I play in this? God is about to quicken some things for some of you. Are you ready? Are you ready for it? You know, all of these things here, our worship, the warfare, our witness, and the wealth can only come by the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. When Noah had to build the ark, it was the first time a ship was built. God gave strategy. And to this day, that strategy for building ships is still in place. In, in, if you read in Noah and in Genesis chapter 6, he, the Lord, I think it's verse 14 onwards, He gave exact strategy, verse 14 to 16, exactly how Noah should build it. Noah became an engineer overnight. Noah didn't go to engineering school. Noah went to heaven. Or rather, heaven came to Noah. In Exodus 35, when they were building the tabernacle, 